Yeah, this is the start of chapter 11. It's the story of, uh, of an ageing, divorced, alcoholic supervisor of our security installations who is tippling in the bedroom of a small Scottish hotel. And, um, well, it's, uh, it's a stream of consciousness. He's been brooding and thinking about his past life and has come to the conclusion that his past life has been, largely speaking, a waste of time. He was untrue to the the first woman he ever greatly lied. He was untrue to, to his wife and has separated from her. He's engaged in a job he doesn't like, but he can do it, and is kept going by keeping himself drinking and by sexual fantasies, which is all that's left of his love life, but on the whole is disgusted and tired of them. And he has, in fact, a box of pills that he was given once by a chemist and that he thought he might use if he ever wanted to commit suicide. And at the end of the last chapter, chapter 10, he has eventually decided to take them and has, in fact, taken them and has leaned back, waiting to die. And, uh, as a matter of fact, he doesn't, but this is describing his state of mind. This is very nice. No sweat, no hassle, no bother at all. Quickened heart beat like strong wee galloping horses. Dra-da-dum, dra-da-dum. But I lie like a duke in a speeding carriage, jocose and easy oozy. Relaxed and okey dokey, in love with easeful death and ceasing upon the midnight with no pain. Actual time, 5.22. But thank you, Hislop. Your account of present state is otherwise accurate and melodious. Oh, by the by, um, Hislop, who has suffered in his past memories, is a, a teacher who loved English literature but hated children. And... Uh, and who has been rather a cruel man, but, uh, sorry, man. Yeah. Actual time is 5.52, but thank you, Hislop, your account of present state is otherwise accurate and melodious. It cannot last, of course. How long till coma and zero? Fifteen minutes? An hour? Must I completely digest these pills? Full digestion takes at least two hours. I should have asked the chemist about this, but do not worry. Jolly Jimmy Body has been slipped to Mickey Finn by his aristocratic jockey, melancholy Montague Mind, and before sunrise both will drop out of the human race. Damn! Damn! I am starting to feel randy. How inappropriate! How annoying! Temporary last side effect of... last assertion of expiring... Pricks last stand as in, so they say, hanging. Why not? Mine not to reason why, mine not to make reply, mine but to backward liars in rape enjoying what? Red velvet divans, oriental luxury, the ruby divans in Green's playhouse, biggest cinema in Europe, so they said. The fog and frost in November nights made it hard to see the screen from the highest circles. But in one of the ruby-red divans, stuck little alcove for two, Denny and I saw Sudan, in which Pharaoh's daughter, sultry 1940s Holyrood brunette, is captured by Arab slavers and branded but falls in love with barbarian, leading to happy ending with total abolition of slavery in ancient Egypt. Denny asked wonderingly, Did it really happen like that? I laughed and cuddled her for wondering if it could have happened like that. She said mournfully, You shouldn't laugh. I can't help being ignorant. My education was rubbish. Gone soft, I have. She who first made me stiff now makes me weak. Good Denny, sturdy wee compliant pony, a lovely ride. Be glad she loved you. Melt, wait softly for your end. Wail softly for your end. I will not. Prick knows there is still a spark of delight under this dying ash. 
cock for it. Stiffen poker, how? That heart beat me harder, dradadum. My kingdom for a horse. Help me, Hislop. It fell upon the lammas tide when the muir men win their hay. The doughty Douglas went forth to ride into England to drive him a prey. And he has burned the dales of Tyne and part of Bambrashire. And three strong towers on Roxburgh fell. He left them all in fire. Young Loch and Varys come out of the west. The Assyrian has come down like a wolf from the fold. I gallop, dirt gallop, we galloped all three. Bring me my bow of burning gold. The battle closes thick and bloody. Forth flashed the red artillery. Stormed it with shot and shell. Boldly they rode and well. Into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell. Rode the six hundred. Steady, boys, steady. Sweating hard are we. Pre-climactically tense. Excellent. Sound the clarion, fill the fife. To all the sensual world proclaim One crowded hour of glorious life Is worth an age without a name But please always also to remember That beneath the hammer blows of fate Dradadum and the very storm Tempest and as I may say Whirlwind of your passion Dradadum You must acquire and beget A temperance that may give it smoothness So cool it man Bravo Hislop Maybe you knew your job. Perhaps all teachers should pour fine stuff into children's ears and leave their memories to resurrect it when they find their own thoughts inadequate. I stand again, tense in the chariot of bed, controlling hands on the reins of a foul imagination which, properly controlled, will pull me to a little glowing core of delight in the valley of the shadow of death. Perhaps you are not dying... Shut up, shut up. Oh, what can I do tomorrow if I do not die tonight? I cannot face another superintendent of bonded warehouses, another bank manager, another security officer with acting rank of colonel. I can no longer hide from them the hislop in me, the mean snigger that a world ruled by shameless greed and cowardice and which thinks these insanities are serious, essential, traditional, straightforward, common-sense business. They are that. Indeed they are. But the knowledge now stamps my face with a smug little rigid grin. Just before I took the pills, something happened. What? Which makes me incapable of my job, although I cannot live without the movement it gives, the rides and blissful naps, in planes, trains, taxis, the cosy anonymity of a different lounge bar and bedroom every second or third evening. But I need the rides most, hurling warm through all the weathers and seasons with a paperback thriller on my lap and always Scotland outside the window with more changes of nature in ten miles than England has in fifteen or Europe in twenty or India, America, Russia in a hundred. If I stopped travelling and stay in one place, I will become a recognisable, pitiable, out of pity for your condition I will take no action, despicable drunkard. I can only keep my dignity and stay mysterious by ceasing upon the midnight with no pain, etc. The chemist was a heavy man with a face like a glum cherub's. These will do the trick, he said, putting the little bottle in my hand. A soft hiss and a fusty smell came from the gas chandelier. Yes, a gas chandelier, dimly lighting that queer little parlour. Can pills lose their potency? These have not. They are working. They are working. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though etc., and the ache, the pains are rhythmical. Dradadumba, dumba Change from our old friend Dradadum. Shakes me, it does. Cold sweat now, too. Splendid. I like this. At school I envied the sickly types went down with flu, broke a leg, had tonsils or appendix out. It freed them for a while from the common rut. I have never been ill. Even hangovers in the days when I noticed my hangovers did not unnerve this hand 
which delicately, firmly manipulated the nicest, the tiniest and most intricate connections. Now the raised forefinger vibrates violently. I feel the pulse ache in it. The stiff indicator under the belly also coldly vibrates. Queer feelings, queer words are abroad in me. Words like Chimborazo, Kotopaxi, Kilimanjaro, Kankanyunga, Fujiyama, Nagasaki, Mount Vesuvius, Leighton, Lugano, Portobello, Balahulish, Korivrechen, Echelfechen, Armageddon, Amarsales, Guillotine, Leningrad, Stalingrad, Ragnarok, Skadarak, Surlipan, Davignon, Agincourt, Bannockburn, Cavalry, Calvary, Calgary, Wounded Knee, Easter House, Drum Chapel, Mary Hill, Weskelbred, Castle Milk, Motherwell, Hunterson Terminal, Megawatt, Kiliwatt, Dungaree Overall, Kilowatt equals 1.34 horsepower. I'm back to Dradadum. I am in chaos. I am sick. My head is full of rubber bullets. My head is full of snow and it's melting. My head is full of wee boats and they're all sunk. My head is full of rice stags and they're all burning. My head is crammed with engines, doing different things at different grounds. You can't control them. I can't control them. Quick, 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 grab, jump, astride, astride, astride. The nearest, cling like grim death to biggest, fastest, loudest going. Dung, 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 all dung, over dung, all dung, under dung. Daffy down, dilly dung, ding the dung, dear down, among the leaves so green. Oh, 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 oh. After that, the text splits into several streams of of typography in which the different parts of his mind are saying different things simultaneously. <laughs> So not practical for a reading then. <laughs> no. <laughs>